Welcome to MarcusNews.com. Cornell University did the largest, most comprehensive scientific study ever conducted on what happens when people eat meat, dairy, and animal products. Is it really good or bad for us? Are we lacking key nutrients if we don't eat meat? Do we need meat for protein? Do people with certain blood types need to eat meat? If you or someone you know has cancer, heart disease, or diabetes, you need to know about the China study. Meet the man who conducted this groundbreaking study right now on marcusnews.com. If you're into health and healing and getting yourself into a, a better state of health and living a long, healthy life, you've got to watch this video, especially if the issue, the topic of your issue is eating meat and how it affects the human body and any kind of animal products. And if you think protein, you're brainwashed into believing that you need to kill animals in order to have protein, you gotta watch this because this is the, the video that I have been so excited. I'm amazed I'm even doing this video. <laughs> I flew across the country to Cornell University to interview the author of this book, The Groundbreaking China Study. This book is world changing. And I have the honor of interviewing Dr. T. Colin Campbell, who's with me today, yes, you all know who he is, who is going to explain to you who don't know about this, the effects of eating animal products on the human body. Cornell University, and this is a real study, studied 120 villages, was it? In 130 China? villages. 130 villages in China, which incorporated over, what, six and a half thousand people and the effects that eating animals has on their body. So thank you for being here. This is an honor. It's beyond words to be able to do this because this is going to really hopefully set people straight because most of this stuff until for most people, it's hippie talk. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's just, you just don't want to kill animals. It's, but nothing beats a good old scientific study, especially from a reputable university. I, there is a lot of uh, controversy with you and the powers that run the world, the country, the whatever, right? The apologists for the existing system. Right, exactly. And the apologists for the status quo, doing the wrong thing. You're doing something that's going against what they tell you to do and say in, in the educational system, in the medical system, and, and you're upsetting a lot of people by coming out and saying that. I'm amazed you even pulled this off with the... With the with the university that they even allowed this to happen. Well, the university wasn't in a position to stop it, really. They could have, but uh, with the way it works in the research world, uh, we get money to do the research. The money came from the National Institutes of Health in Washington. That's the biggest biomedical research agency in the world, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I got money for many years from them. It's very competitive, and that's my doing. That's not the university. Aren't so. the big industries Sure. Yeah. Fed well, by the beef and dairy and yeah, I mean the industries. Of course, they they fund some research like this. No, no, don't they try to stop this kind of? Oh, stuff? oh, yeah. They 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 raise cane. They <laughs> did things like you know maybe one on occasion one industry tried to get me fired. They couldn't because I had tenure. Uh, you know these kind of things happen. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I'm just focused on the research and say, you know, screw them. I should say that. But <laughs> it's a miracle you're able to pull this off because the world needs this information. And even if one person can come forward and and bring this forward, so okay, so let's get to the good stuff. For those people who are just watching this for the first time and who, who are just getting into health for the first time and who have been brainwashed, especially with, well, I guess, how many, what, 80% of the world eats meat. Uh, um, this is pretty, pretty uh, life-changing for people to even consider the thought that, I mean, everybody thinks you have to have meat for protein. Well, you don't. We don't. We know that. That's true, what you just said. You know, people are fascinated with protein probably more than any other single nutrient. Way, all the way back to the time when it was first discovered in 1839. Protein was the thing. You know, that, that's our life. We have to have as uh, much as we can get, more or less. People assumed it was always from animals. That's not true. We get all the protein we need from plants. Right. Where do gorillas get their... Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the biggest, protein. strongest animals. Right. Um, the the, the uh, Elephants. Elephants and giraffes. I mean, yeah, they, they make yeah. all the protein they need. Exactly. From eating plants. Exactly. What happens when people eat animal products, meat. The book itself, the China study, has got sort of two stories in here. One story was all the laboratory research we had been doing for years, you know, experimentally, especially on diet and cancer, especially on the effect of protein on cancer growth. So I, I was really into the weeds, you know, into the details of how that works. 
Uh, we got some ideas. Protein promotes cancer. We could turn pro cancer on by giving more protein. And that, by the way, was dairy protein. Right, animal protein. Animal protein. No, so not, I'm, I'm from a farm, and that was a, that was a pill to take a little while to adjust <laughs> right, to. Right. Uh, so we did that for some years with lots of students and other colleagues. And, and then finally the opportunity came along for me. Let's go to China. We had the first, in my laboratory, we had the first senior scientists from China to come to the United States. At the time, our two countries were first talking to each other. He was a scientist, and so we organized a study that was jointly funded by the United States and China to some extent the United Kingdom or England. We went there and we had an opportunity to survey a big population of a total of 100, living in a total of 130 villages. You know, 6,500 adults plus their family. And we just collected a massive amount of information. We looked at blood samples and urine samples and food samples. And, and the reason we went to China to do that is because cancer was so common in certain areas of the country and not in others. Mm -hmm. So we had a chance to compare. What's so special about the ones consuming, getting more cancer, actually getting more heart disease, getting more of this, getting more of that? And so we, we collected a massive amount of information. And so, you know, it's, it's not simple, it, we, we, it was complex. And so we were uh, then having a look at which kind of nutrient characteristics were associated with getting more disease. Mm -hmm. And it turns out the good old day, we he, eat here in the West. You know, more animal food, which right. meant more protein, more fat. Right. It meant also meant less plants. Plants have an antioxidants. That's a big part of the story. Right. So when we consume, in, in a nutshell, when we start consuming more animal foods in our diet, getting more protein because we think it's so valuable, we get more protein, we get more fat, we get less fiber, we get less all the vitamins, we get less. The, the combination of everything working together is amazing. Right. And so, and, and that, that, that question is that working together, that's a really key thing. In science, we tend to focus on, unfortunately, on just looking at one nutrient at a time. Right. Protein does this, fat right, does right, that, right. fiber. You know, that, that's sort of some useful information in a sense, but that's not the best information. The best is information stand back and look at the whole foods. Right. That's really important. Well, animal products aren't just, it, it isn't just the fact that it's, 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 it's cholesterol and fat. I mean, it has, it has, a cow has hormones that make it grow to be 2,000 pounds. The, the IGF-1 in a cow is powerful. So you're feeding cancer and things that grow, that you don't get from plants. I mean, right. And that's, that's part of the story. That's true. Uh, and we all make hormones. Is it, uh, that's right, but it only makes the body only makes what it needs. Yeah, that's right. It makes what it needs. Exactly right. You exactly take right. A, a, a hormones from a cow that 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 make it grow. To be, that's why bodybuilders like to have meat because they want to get big. Well, there's another part of that story though too. We increase our hormones, if you will, by eating animal protein. Protein causes those hormones right. to increase. That's why bodybuilders like it, but they also get cancer That's and heart right. disease. I mean, the three biggest things, the uh, causes of death in, this, in the modern world are heart disease, cancer, and diabetes, all of which can be traced to animal products. In the Western world. Right. You know, if you go to the poor countries, also they die of infectious diseases. Right. So it's a different story. But yeah. in any case, the Western world, yes. Yeah. Diabetes, heart disease, and cancer are the biggies. And people don't know that there's a connection between diabetes and animal cancer, products. Heart, yeah, they, 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 they think it's just bread and sugar. <laughs> that's right. And that, that's, a, that's an interesting point, by the way, that uh, I got involved in, is that this idea it has such a broad effect yeah. on all kinds of illnesses and even aches and pains. You know, if people switch to a whole food, plant-based diet, that's the bottom line. If they switch to that, even the chronic pain that 20% of our population tend to have on a regular basis, that tends to go away in a lot of cases, at least 70 to 80% of it. Wasn't there part of the, the book where they took people that were eating meat and had cancer, they got off of it, and then people that were off of meat got onto it, and, and you saw what happened when they switched? Well, that was my own, our own study in the laboratory, not in China, that was done, you know, experimentally. But you did do that? We did that. And what We happened? could turn on cancer by increasing the consumption of animal protein. In this case, it was milk protein. Right. That's important. People think it's just meat. It's dairy no, is a big part right. of it. It is. Dairy, eggs, meat, that sort of thing. So when we gave animal protein, cancer started to grow. We take it away, it cuts it off. You give it back again, it cuts it on. In other words, that was one of the early 
uh, I guess you could call it discoveries that we made way back in the 1970s. And this is actual scientific testing that Yes, of this. course, of course. And we, we got into the laboratory and we worked with cells and the biochemistry and we tried to understand, is that really true? This is crazy. <laughs> you know, I'm coming from a dairy farm, yeah, right? Yeah, it's yeah. hard to digest that or accept it. So we started looking for the biochemical mechanism. We looked and looked and looked and that took about 15 years. And I finally became convinced, oh my God, you know, everything's going wrong. When you start eating animal protein, it, it does all kinds of things inside of the cell and inside of the body to start causing these disease to form. And all sorts of other things, all kinds of illnesses. And so in the moment you pull that out, eat more plants, make them 100% if possible. Mm -hmm. Don't add a lot of uh, salt and sugar and fat to that, of course. If you do it that way, we can see results in 10 days. Wow. 15 days, 20 days. It's really, truly amazing. And my, my good friend at Cleveland Clinic, Dr. Caldwell Esselton, another friend, Dr. Dean, Dean Ornish, they had been doing some of this kind of thing from a little different perspective. They're both doctors, and they, they basically work on heart disease. They right. could cure heart disease. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing, yeah, so you yeah. look at it. I know, I know. But it, there are people who are going to say, um, well, I have a, a grandfather or an uncle that's 97 years old and he's eaten meat all his life. What do you well, say yeah, that what I say to it, you know, there's some people, about 5% of the people, more or less, can smoke all their lives. Right, yeah. Never get lung cancer. Yeah. So is that the proof of the pudding? No. I mean, right. uh, what about the other 95%? Exactly. And, and I, I, I always crazy. say it's not just what you eat. It's like, do you have stress? Are, are you exercising? I mean, right. health is a whole package deal. Yeah, it's right. not yeah. just that. And yeah, eating a little bit is, in the, if you have a little bit of bad stuff, but a lot of good stuff, it kind of, you know. That's right. But most people in the modern world, all they eat is just bad stuff. And so it, it, right. it comes up pretty quick. So dairy is obviously just as bad as the meat, which includes, ladies, yogurt, right? That's right. Yeah, and, and what people don't understand is yogurt is, is just fat and sugar, and they say that well, it has probiotics in it. You know, science is kind of complicated, as you might imagine. Uh, some of this stuff, the, the so-called probiotics, you know, taken alone, you look at them, it looks pretty good, you know, some of them. Right. And so in the short run, you can actually see some benefits if right. you're doing that kind of thing. Right. But, but the point is that, uh, what, what that says to me, uh, oftentimes, because it might be microorganisms in our gastrointestinal tract, in our colon, for example. Right. You take them out, and, oh, they can do some good things. Oh, this looks really neat. But to turn, take it out and put it in a pill and do it that way is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Because if you eat the right food, what happens? All those organisms in our intestine, they, they shift gears. Yeah. They become the right kind of exactly, organisms. That's exactly. what happens. Right, right. There are a lot of vegetarians out there who take whey protein, and they don't even know that's dairy-based. Now, is that isolated so much that it's not really dairy anymore, or is it still a foreign protein to the body that, that causes autoimmune issues Yeah, and I, I'm aware that athletes like to use a lot of protein. They do that, but and, and what I've now become acquainted with or know several world-class athletes in different sports. Mm -hmm. They have switched you know, over to a plant-based diet and they actually improve their performance. Right, exactly. From wrestlers to weightlifters to baseball players, to basketball, football, yeah. you na name it. And so um, I just, the other day, Tom Brady, um, you know, the quarterback. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, his chef had taken our course here and he got on to doing this kind of thing. And so uh, others like Gary Player and, and golf. Right. Or Tony Gonzalez, mm -hmm. you know, the great football player. Right. Yeah, and a whole bunch of uh, people like that are suing it. So they don't need extra protein because, you know, they die early. If they stay on that kind of stuff, right. their, their death rate is So early. what's your opinion on whey? That's, the, that's the big thing now, whey protein? Yeah, no, we don't need that. No, the, the whey is just another animal protein source. And there's some evidence that maybe it may not be quite as bad as, let's say, casein mm -hmm. in a dairy, on the one hand. On the other hand, you have to look at it in totality. You can't just pull things out and say, right. I mean, it gives you some information, but in the final, in the final analysis, it's the total yeah. food. But you can get your protein from plant sources. Of course, legumes, obviously a great source of protein, uh, whole grains, you know, and, and leafy vegetables, mm -hmm. that's all. Even, even the plants that have the least protein is really enough. I'm thinking of potatoes. 
You know, the amount of protein in potato print yeah, well. Yeah, it's just starch. And yeah, well, so there's some protein there. Yeah, there's a little but there, But there's enough, there's actually enough protein in, in the potatoes <laughs> to be early. So, so the whole thing is crazy. So if you eat a well-balanced mixture of plant right. foods, you should be getting... You know, they say right some right. plants only have a certain amount of amino acids. It's an incomplete protein. Right, right. So you mix it with other plants. And I hear that a lot from the meat people. Well, plants have incomplete proteins. They're missing three of the essential amino acids or something. That's, that's fake news. Really? Yeah, it's fake news. Uh, it's true that, you know, uh, when you consume a plant protein, there's one or two amino acids, a little lower than, it's just not as efficient, let's say, as animal protein. And, and, but there's a reason for that. It, it, it slows down our growth a little bit. That used to be considered bad. It's good. It makes you live longer. It lives you live longer and you don't get the disease, subsequent right. diseases. So the so-called incomplete proteins pay no attention to it. Good. They're superior. Because anything that makes you accelerate something, growth, like you know, right. people who want to get big muscles fast. There's a price you pay. It grows cancer fast. Yeah, and they all get they all get heart attacks and That's cancer. Right. And, and there's and, two sides of that coin. Yeah, yeah, they lose their hair, get prostate cancer, <laughs> right? It's just, the big trend now is bone broth. It sounds kind of disgusting. If you eat whole food, plant-based diet, you don't need bone broth. You don't need whey. You don't even need a lot of supplements. I mean, forget right. it. Exactly. That's that's nature. Yeah. That's nature's formula. Yeah. And it works. I agree. I mean, people think that people who are vegetarian or, or, or I should say vegan, which means no dairy, no milk, no cheese, no butter, just plant foods, that they think they're going to, they're lacking, like, uh, they're, they say there's, there's certain things that meat has that you need, like certain, like, what is it, taurine and certain amino acids that you don't get from plants? Cats need that. Cats need taurine. But not humans. And lions, no. Okay. That's nonsense. And what was the other one? B12, but... B12. That, that's yep. dirt, right? I mean, it's, well, it's organisms in the right. soil. B12 is not so bad. I mean, if, if there, as one gets into this, uh, and especially the food is you know scrupulously clean compared to what it was maybe met right. decades ago you know, instead of taking it out of the garden we will be missing a little b12 because so. we don't have the, the food right off the plant. yes plains. exactly yeah. Yeah, that's right so we take a b12 and that's yeah, a big, big deal yeah and it doesn't mean you're not supposed to eat plants you know like right. of course not yeah. that's, that's silly so uh, what other major interesting discoveries that fascinate people are, are from the book that, that you found scientifically? Yeah, yeah here, here's what uh, I, I get excited about it, I guess you can say. What we're discovering about nutrition, which incidentally as a science is not taught in medical schools. Right. So it's not part of the medical practice system. What we're learning about nutrition, the whole food, plant-based, it has a very broad effect. What that means is it treats all kinds of illnesses we might get or we have. And it's a good for treatment, too. If you already have it, eat that, and you can reverse a lot of these things. Anyhow, the nutrition thing is very broad. Compared to the alternative is taking a single chemical. We call them drugs. Yeah. If you, take, if you use drugs to maintain health, that's not going to work because you get side effects, and they don't work anyhow very well. And if you keep on eating a bad thing, you're going to take drugs to patch yeah, up yeah. your problems a little bit. Yeah, in the short run, you might see something. But in the long run, no. But I, always, yeah. I don't take any drugs. We yeah. don't. I'm 83. I don't take a drug. It's just a chemical that has a reaction in your body that hides a symptom. So the doctor's basically right. giving you a symptoms. prescription to hide a symptom. But, but I always say, well, why don't you stop doing what's causing the problem in the first place? That's right. But people don't want to do that. They say, no, I want to keep eating my pizza and my beef and my milk and my cheese. But uh, just give me a, a, something to hide the, the symptoms that are coming from that. Right. It, it's ridiculous that that's that's. Well, some, some some of that works. Some of the drugs. I'm not you know totally opposed to some drugs because some drugs used appropriately at a certain time might have like painkillers or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's understandable. But the, but the fact is that's not the way, you, we don't make a lifestyle. You can't that. do long term like that. No, you know, I mean, you eat the right thing, you don't eat ever, almost ever. Yeah, and if you eat the right, the really, really healthy stuff, your body's going to heal itself right. quickly and naturally. Right. Because um, people always want scientific proof to prove that this is legitimate. So what, what other things have you found in, in your study that, that are fascinating? Well, the, the other thing is, uh, is the effect is fast, as I indicated before. It's broad and it's rapid, surprisingly rapid. You change the diet in 10, 15, 20 days. If you got some problems, they start going away. That's amazing. You know, a lot of drugs can't even do that. Yeah. And uh, they, they cause problems along the way. And it's, and it's nice and safe. You don't get side effects. The other thing is just uh, Nutrition trumps genes. 
A lot of people want right. to make make out that you know we get it's disease. genetic. There's nothing I can do about it. Family, yeah, yeah. You know, it, we we all have some bad genes. We have some genes we we'd rather not have. Right. But if he's the right food, keep them under control. Yeah. Because yeah. genes don't get expressed. You know, the big thing now is the paleo diet and, and the, just be a caveman and eat meat. That's a ruse. You know, the paleo diet, the low carb diet, they're all the same, just yeah. different names. Atkins. And really what they're doing, they're promoting, they're, they're claiming that carbohydrates are the problem. That's crazy. Carbohydrates are only produced in plants. So in a way, what they're doing, they're using this argument. Well, avoid carbohydrates. Well, then you have to eat more protein and fat, you know, those kind of foods. That's really that, what the real motive is, to protect the consumption of animal foods. Mm -hmm. So they make this story up. I mean, sure, some certain kinds of sugars, the simple ones like sugar, right. white flour, you know, that, that's, that's, if they went that far, okay, we can agree. Yeah, right. But that's not what the issue is. Right. You know, it's, you eat the total, all the food, you don't worry about that. What do you say to these people that say, well, I have a certain body type or blood type or... Nah. I, I got that book on the blood type thing, and in, in the beginning, I, I thought, well, maybe he has something there. I started reading it. I remember I got to page 35. I couldn't stand it because his understanding of science was zilch. <laughs> so I gave it to one of my postdocs to read it. I said, take a look at this when it came out. He also got about to that far, too. He says, I don't want to read that book. I mean, you know, he's, he's basically, it's, in, in many ways, it's kind of fake science. I actually have a blood type where I'm supposed to eat meat. Me too. Yeah, and I, I know people that haven't eaten, that have the same blood type, and they haven't eaten meat in 30 years, and they're better off than people that do eat meat. That's right. I, I'm supposed to eat eating meat. Yeah. I'm, I'm 83, and I don't take a drug. You're yet. 83. That's that's amazing. You look you're amazing for your age. And how long have you been vegetarian? Uh, we started changing in the late 1970s, early 80s, thanks to my wife. She was listening to what I was saying, and so she started changing the diet. By 1990. We had made a complete, well, 1992 or three, something like that. We had basically gone the whole way, you know, just eating whole plant-based foods. That's great. And um, yeah, and so that's what, so whatever number of the years that, that is, and I still run, and I, you know, I might tell a little story here that was kind of a neat, neat illustration. Two days before Christmas, this past Christmas, I was playing racquetball. I was wanting to play racquetball with my grandsons, both of whom are really good athletes, and my son. And uh, I just wanted to get a point on it if I could. I used to play quite a bit. I fell. I fractured my hip. And somebody my age, that's not good. You know, fractured hips is a bad Yeah, it's deal. usually a death sentence for a lot of people. That's right. I fractured my hip. So I go down and they took me to the hospital. The next day, he did an operation. He, he, the, when the surgeon came out of the room, I was still under anesthesia, more or less. He sees my wife and he goes like that. And she says, your husband has unusually strong bones for someone his age. Mm -hmm. And she says to him, you know why that's so? He said, why? He doesn't use dairy. And of course that is, goes right in the face. He's a bone doctor. Yeah, yeah. And so he the now, he, so I, I give him the book, I said, read the book. Milk and And calcium, so yeah, yeah. you're supposed to say six to 12 months before you sort of get over it. I'm around, I have a friend yesterday, two and a half miles. <laughs> and it's just, just about, about four months. So, you know, I obviously have recovered very fast. That is awesome. Yeah. So when was this study done in China? Was it in the 70s? We had, there's two sets of data there. There's one has to do with mortality rates in China. What, what the Chinese had learned in the 1970s mm -hmm. and published in 1981 was that cancer was very common in certain areas right. around the country and not in others. So that was done then. We went to China in 1983 and 84. We collected a lot of information to see why cancer is so high here right. or so low there. So it was the 70s and 80s. And and that was China, which means back then they were not really into junk food like we were. No, they were they still weren't. more primitive. They were having more, more closer to nature foods. In rural so, China, especially. Right, because here are people, the reason they get cancer is because they eat Twinkies and, and donuts and pizza. But over there, they were still eating more uh, natural more closer to nature so really it wasn't the modern refined foods that was killing it was eating animals and animal products is was killing hundreds of millions of people heart disease cancer diabetes you know it is we don't need to do that obviously we just should eat the whole plant-based foods we shouldn't not only should we, we should try to avoid animal foods we should try to also avoid the what i call processed foods right convenience food exactly even if they're made out of plant parts right because I'm talking about donuts and... Exactly, exactly. You know, made all plants, but still, that's the wrong... Right. That's the wrong formula. This is revolutionary 
stuff. And it's so important people need to know this. The, really, the only diet really works in totality. You know, that involves all of our health problems, if you will. And it works at all ages. That's important to know, too. And it works across different societies. Eating a whole food, plant-based diet will give you the best health for the most number of years, period. Thank you for the interview. Thank you for your time. You're really helping the world. It's a miracle you were able to get it through the system and get it out there. That's going to happen. We got, it is, you know, it's also important to the environment, I should say. Yeah, the truth always comes out. You can't hide it. It will always come out somehow. And things have to balance. So thank you again. Thank you. The book is The China Study, the most comprehensive study of nutrition ever conducted. Other doctors like Dean Ornish say it's one of the most important books about nutrition ever written. Dr. Campbell runs the Center for Nutrition Studies. It's through Cornell University. It's an online course that anyone can take to learn more about diet, nutrition, and lifestyle that's backed by science. Finally, the truth is coming out. You can learn more at nutritionstudies.org or email info at ecornell.com. My name is Marcus Rothkrantz. Keep watching marcusnews.com to find out more about how to radically improve your life.